Hi, I'm Thiago Passos for SSRB TV and I'm here at Microsoft Ignite Australia in the beautiful Gold Coast. I'm here with Mark Rhodes. Mark is a premier field engineer with Microsoft and also he's a pretty good guitar player. Hi Mark, <laughs> how's it going? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good, very well, thanks. Um, so let's start with the first question. Why is identity that important and, and why is everyone talking about it today? Sure, um, identity has become really important uh, as we're moving into a cloud landscape simply because uh, your security perimeter is no longer your data center. Right, firewalls, uh, network devices aren't going to protect you anymore, right, because your services are now moving outside of the data center into the cloud. So, for example, let's say you're using a service on Azure, all of that's going to be outside of your data center. It doesn't matter if it's infrastructure as a service, it doesn't matter if it's platform as a service, the same perimeter that protects your data center will no longer protect you. At least this is my take on it. And therefore, the new perimeter you need to be aware of is your identity perimeter. Right, that's going to be the border for authenticating and authorizing your users to enter an application or a data center. Cool. Uh, and for a company that wants to move to the cloud, what are the first things they need to think about and if there are any main concerns? Sure. Um, obviously, the reason you move to the cloud is not going to be identity. Right? People don't look at uh, identity and say, right, I need to move to Microsoft Azure Active Directory. What they do is they look at something like Exchange, and they might have an Exchange server on premises, mm -hmm. and they say, look, I've got these 500 mailboxes here. Uh, each of these mailboxes has a limit of two gigabytes. Right? It's costing me a packet to keep this on premises. So I'm going to move this up to the cloud where I've got 50 gigabyte or larger mailboxes, and I've got less administrative overhead. I don't need any servers. But when you do that, you're not considering the identity, right? That's not the driver for you to move to the cloud. The cost savings and the maintenance you get from your Exchange Online migration are the driver. So you tend to just implement identity as kind of a stopgap measure. You just click, click, click through it. It's done. You don't care about it. You can forget about it. But from a security perspective, that's not the best approach. Mm -hmm. right? From a security perspective and a longevity of your actual Active Directory infrastructure perspective, the best thing you could possibly do would be to plan this out well in advance figure out what your identity strategy is going to be, figure out exactly what you need out of the cloud and do everything properly according to all the guidance provided by Microsoft. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and what are the main pain points that you can foresee and any tips for, for anyone who's moving to AD in the cloud? Sure, um, one of the, the main pain points is going to be, as I said, people just click through the installation. Mm -hmm. So they find later on the impl implementation of, say, Azure Active Directory Connect isn't going to be the most suitable implementation for them. Um, what they need to do then is go and remediate problems and quite often we see things like service accounts have been provisioned up into the cloud when they don't need to be. Right? And quite often when that happens, they're licensed. And that, that's a pain point because you know, if you've got an E3 license or an E5 license in Office 365, you don't want to be associating that license with a service account that doesn't need it. Okay. Right? So that, that's just one of the pain points for example. Uh, another pain point might be people don't know which identity strategy they should be going for. Mm. You know, there are really four different identity strategies. There's the cloud only one, which I think you're going to cover in a question in a second. Yep. Uh, the synchronized identity model or password hash synchronization. Pass through authentication, which is a brand new one I talked about yesterday. Uh, I've got a Channel 9 talk, which will be showing from yesterday's session. You, which you, can, you can go through a, a, in a bit more details if you want. Sure. Um, well, there's this uh, new concept called pass through authentication, mm -hmm. and that allows you to authenticate against on premises infrastructure without ADFS servers and without having to synchronize a password to the cloud. Cool. And that, as I've said to some other people, this is kind of the holy grail of identity because it allows you to use your Active Directory uh, infrastructure without having to make any compromises for security because it's using Kerberos behind the scenes, which in, you know, was thought to be impossible for cloud mm. technology. Nice, and, and what was the main benefit of having AD in the cloud only? Sure, well if you move to the cloud only, that would suggest you're a very advanced customer or you're a very new customer. All right. um, if I was a new business you know, and I was spinning up, I wouldn't even consider on-premises Active Directory. Right? I wouldn't consider file shares, I wouldn't consider things like laptops joined to a domain because that technology is slowly becoming irrelevant. Yep. Um, it might not be at the moment, still, still quite relevant, but mm -hmm. at some point for a new business it is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. So that would be one of the use cases is a born in the cloud business. Uh, the other one would be if you're moving from on-premises into the cloud, um, let's say you had a decentralized infrastructure like a, mm -hmm. lot, like a hub and spoke kind of office, that kind of arrangement tends to make a lot of sense because you don't 
want to have infrastructure in each office. Yeah. So you take your Active Directory servers, you synchronize them up to Azure Active Directory, and over time you slowly migrate all your applications and all your services up into the cloud. You take all the computer accounts and you do, instead of a domain join, you do an Azure Active Directory join, okay. and then you can decommission your on-premises Azure infrastructure, uh, sorry, your on-premises Active mm -hmm. Directory infrastructure mm -hmm. once it's no longer in use. And at that point you'll be cloud only. And the advantage of that is you don't have any on-premises infrastructure at all. Oh, nice. Yeah. And any, any downside of, of having AD in the cloud against sure. on-premise? There are some. Um, in some respects, you can lose a little bit of control because IT administrators are used to things like group policy. Mm -hmm. right? So moving from a domain join machine to an Intune or a, um, uh, yeah, an Intune join machine or an Azure Active Directory join machine mm -hmm. is a bit of a jump for some administrators and they might not be quite ready for it yet. So that, that could be a disadvantage because they won't be familiar with the tool sets required and needed to manage that kind of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, cool. Aside from that, there's really not that many downsides to it. All the services now are being built from the ground up to work with Azure Active Directory, awesome. so it would make sense to start migrating towards them from my perspective. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Mark. Thank it you. It was awesome having you here today. Uh, I'm Thiago Passos for SSW TV. Thanks for watching.